On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 2004. We're going to be taking a look at Steve Hackett, and he's going to be performing his solo from Firth of Fifth. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So looking at Steve has proven to be a difficult proposition because of the length of the songs. As you guys can imagine with Genesis being so progressive, they can be very long indeed. But I have been sent this, which is just the solo section from a performance back in 2004 and it's just over three minutes in length. So we will jump into this and see what Steve gets up to. I think we'll watch it all the way through and then we'll jump into the analysis at the end. But let's see how Steve gets on. have it. I mean, the first thing that hits you about this is the groove. Just the feel of the rhythm section going on, great bass playing going on here as well. Listen out for some of those bass lines. If you do have a sub that you can turn up to 11, definitely do that so that you can hear it more clearly. But with the guitar, we've got this smooth buttery tone that is going on with a fair amount of delay on there of course we've got distortion as well but it means that that line's going to be repeating whenever Steve's playing any particular phrase 
and we've got such a blend of techniques here but it's really keeping the focus on melody this isn't just mindless shredding for three minutes and that's certainly keeping it you know true to the original record and obviously this is just a tiny segment of it but having that appreciation of melody and keeping it authentic means that you're taken on that journey melodically and it's such an important thing with guitar solos to keep people interested and to give the guitar a voice and that's definitely what we get here the thing about steve's voice through his guitar is it's got such a distinct sound and i think a lot of it is to do with his vibrato and that's pretty much the footprint or the fingerprint even of so many guitarists it's the way that they vibrato at the end of a phrase. It's this kind of wobble that we have and I don't think that this is something that Steve is kind of manipulating. He just does this vibrato and it's kind of, you know, when he's on a note and he's going... You get that kind of thing. So it's a really subtle bend. So he's not going up very high, but when I say high, I mean in terms of pitch going, you know, and being more dramatic, he's got this. And he tends to do that where he goes slightly sharp of the note, but keeps the vibrato. So for example, and I am exaggerating it there, but by applying the vibrato sharp of the note, rather than going and staying on it, and going and just teetering sharp it's going to make it stick out more and that's certainly something you can say about Steve's vibrato it does stick out and the faster it is the more excitable or uneasy it's going to sound especially when you've kind of got that kind of thing where even you get uneven waves of vibrato rather than kind of going where I'm literally keeping the trigger points even. So going na 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 na. If you start to wobble those, you know, wobble those notes, but wobble you get that third finger, it starts to sound a bit random. And you can even mess around with you know, making it sound random intentionally. But I think this is something that Steve just does naturally and therefore, this is just his sound. So we'll jump into it in a little bit more detail. We'll start it from the beginning and just dive into what Steve's doing here. And just setting up this groove, it's great that Steve is in charge of setting the tempo here. And that's really important because if you've got a drummer that might start the tempo, if he starts to push that tempo, you're not going to get the same expression and feel to the performance because it's just going to be slightly too fast. So Steve is just placing this exactly where he wants it. He's rolled off a bit of his volume, so he's kind of got this cleaner sound. And kind of like that. So he's kind of hitting the guitar and, you know, hitting his E minor. Kind of like that. And, yeah, I'm not sure whether he's getting <laughs> the hint of the harmonic that I was getting there. But it's just setting up that timing so that everything is in exactly the right place for the whole solo. I just realized that you couldn't see my left hand, but it's not too important. You can see what Steve's doing here with that hammer on of that E minor like that and you want to make sure that you give it a good hammer on so that you can hear that chord nice and clearly but let's continue and here we've got a technique that when you know <laughs> we're looking at videos from back in the day you had that going on where you would actually fade in the note and actually it's actually more difficult on the gem because you know the volume is quite stiff but if you can get 
a really loose, it's actually better on my Fender, if you get a really loose volume, you'll be able to... But what I'm saying is that back in the day, you used to have to roll on and roll off that volume to get that fade in and fade out sound. But here, Steve is using his expression pedal, just using that as a volume, just to kind of tilt it forward and tilt it back. So I've got the same thing here on the floor. So it means that I can have the guitar up to 10, like Steve does here, and we get this, this ability to fade in. Kind of like that, it's a really cool sound, especially with a little bit of delay in there, but let's have a listen on. And we get this again, a little bend this time. And, you know, real subtlety here with that vibrato, which is a little bit faster, doesn't cover a lot of pitch. And this just fading it in all the time and what we've got throughout this solo is really keeping it in this minor key because we're in E minor we're really keeping it natural minor so it means that we're spending a lot of time on you know rather than you know, say for example you're playing your standard pentatonic well, shape, if you want to get into the extended shape, that's where we are. But here, you know, <laughs> playing all those pentatonic notes, really straightforward, but here, getting into that minor scale, and with the bend that he does as well, and these hammer-ons as well, I think we had another hammer on earlier on. This isn't going to be an instructional video. I haven't been through it and worked it all out. We're just going to be breaking down what's going on here. And again, hammer on's there. We had that. Oh. Again, go down to that natural minor. And. Okay. First time, second time. So, you know, a little conversation there. But it's just that call and response from the first line to the second line. And that little jump over, over that G string. Okay, so we got into a little bit of tapping there, and that was here, you know, from our fourth fret up to seven. He doesn't come in with, well, he starts, you know, hammering on and pulling off in order to get the note to start. And then he doesn't come in with his second finger or his first finger, which you might use if you palm your pick. He comes in with the pick, and he's just using the edge of it, kind of like that, to get that sound of him kind of goes back to hammer-ons and pull-offs. Good example there of that vibrato where we had this. And it's quite fast with a wobble in there. And here, He's just hit this sweet spot of feedback, and I'm not sure whether he's using a feedback pedal or whether he's just got this position on stage. Generally, that's what happens, is that in your sound check, you get your position on stage where you know feedback happens, and you just find that sweet spot so that when you then play live, you can stand in that position, hit the note, and then let that feedback just continue. <laughs> And again, we've got this definite melody going on where we have this. Um, with a little wobble in there. 
and even more of a wobble there. And again, where we've got this little rundown that we have on down. We had a bend there. And And when we get here Again, we've got that minor scale run up. That's really cool. And it's um it, that wasn't the run up in terms of how it was phrased. We kind of have You know, it's more like that. It wasn't just straight notes as I played it. I was just demonstrating the notes that Steve's using to get up to that final bend. And listen to the way that the synth is now in there, really thickening up in the background. Now we're back into our fading in of the notes here. You know, that kind of thing. And we had a little bit of extra tempo added in there after our bed. We then kind of had you know, a little rundown, I don't know what it was, but probably... You know, keeping that... That minor scale. Kind of thing. It is sometimes quite difficult to make out all of the notes because of the amount of delay that's on the sound and, you know, picking out all of those alternate picks, but it will be along those lines. And here we had this... Sound like we had a. I'm just going to take it back to listen to that bend again. Because, I mean, Steve gets this feedback type sound to the bend after he's done it. Like that. And, and that's what a bend sounds like without feedback. He might have a pedal where he's just triggering it in order to get it from. Or it could have been the fact that when he does the bend, his string catches a fret inadvertently and that could set it off. But generally, to get that harmonic sound, you would have to tap in the harmonic like that. But you can see that Steve's hand remains down here all the time. So it might just be a pedal that he's using in order to get that feedback sound. But let's get back into it. <laughs> And listen to the way that dynamically we're now just totally open in the background and you know on the drums we're totally open here dynamically we had this run up as well that I don't know what it was but it'll probably be in that you know that kind of thing you know again kind of like that it's hard to make out with the delay and everything on there but it will be along those kind of lines And there we have it. Really nice ending in order to resolve it. Now, I mean, we've been in the minor key the whole time, which will be our, our E minor. So E minor, A minor, B minor are the chords that you need for this if you're playing the backing. But in the end, we go major. So we're resolving to our major key. And that's why at the end, it's very much like a full stop. And 
kind of uplifting at the end just with that very last chord. And the thing to look out for with this ending is that on the guitar actually we have this bend. You know, which is really subtle, it's just a semitone bend, but the important thing is that we're bending up to the root note of the chord, which is our E, and the backing, the keys, is playing a major chord. So that's where the chord comes in. The chord isn't played on the guitar. So that's what's resolving it all, because you could still, in an E minor, play technically you would go for the se another semitone lower so it'd be a tone lower than where we end up and you go and you would still be in that sad place whereas by taking it a semitone it now puts it in that major space which is a little bit happier but it's a short performance video tonight but there's a lot in there of course <laughs> a lot of technique and a lot of focus on melody which is definitely something that I'm into as a guitarist myself and a lead guitar player I'm always listening out for melody and not really listening out too much for you know speed all the time it depends what you're into but I'm not really into hearing a lot of fast playing. I do like it dotted in there occasionally, but here we get a great mix of just melody with technique, expression, unique vibrato, and this, you know, dotting in of speed, but it certainly doesn't take to the forefront and detract from the solo. So a great performance here from Steve and yet a shorter video to look at, but thank you guys for requesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comment section below. As always, let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!